Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about a new model released in Azure AI Foundry called Codex Mini. So it is a smaller, faster, or you can call it as the CLI version of OpenAI Codex model. The same one which powers the chat GPT's coding abilities. So it helps you write, understand, and improve the code using the natural language prompts. So now you have to just write a query in your own language and it will help you edit or generate a new code. So previously to use the codex, you had to copy paste the code into the browser or rely on the cloud services, which wasn't always convenient or secure. But now using the codex mini or the codex CLI, you can integrate these AI models directly to your development environment. So you can interact with your code securely and within your terminal or the editor itself. Now, another benefit is that the Codex Mini in Azure AI Foundry runs entirely on Azure infrastructure, which ensures that the, your data is within your organizational compliance boundary. And it offers the private networking, role-based access control, and you have a predictable cost management. You can trigger the Codex CLI within your terminal or integrate with the CI-CD pipeline using the GitHub Actions. So it can automatically open the pull request, refactor the files or the test for your code within your Azure environment boundary. There are multiple use cases of this tool. For example, it can, you can use it as a language translation for your code, data to the code transformations. You can provide just the data and it will transform your code or the legacy code migration. You have a legacy and no one in your organization is aware about how to migrate this code. And using the codex, you will be in the better shape to start the migration. Codex Mini works on Linux, Mac OS and the Windows system. However, on Windows, you will need to set up the Windows subsystem for Linux 2, which is WSL2, to ensure compatibility, as Codex Mini is currently optimized for Unix style environment. So in this video, I'll guide you through setting up the Codex Mini within the Visual Studio code in the Windows Virtual Machine using WSL. So we'll go through the installation steps, configuration and demonstrate how Codex Mini can enhance your coding experience. So let's get started in the lab. I have opened the VS code now and let's start with the terminal. Create a new terminal. So I'll use the PowerShell here. Now the first prerequisite for, for using the codex is that you should have Node.js installed. So you can download the Node.js from here. You can easily find this information in the Microsoft documents itself. So if I'll just run node hyphen V. So it shows the node.js version. And if I run npm hyphen V, it shows the package manager version. But you don't have to install it directly in the windows. And that is the limitation because the codex doesn't work in windows directly. It has to use the windows subsystem for Linux, which is WSL. So let's install the WSL first, and then we'll install the package manager there. And it's very easy to install WSL, WSL hyphen hyphen install. It's already installed for me. As you can see, Ubuntu is already installed and it will just directly log in. So first time when you will install it, last for the username and password, you have to provide the username and password and done. So this is how you can install WSL. So if I'll exit and try again. So another time you don't have to write install, just write WSL. and you are in the same directory now. So another step is to install the Node.js, but let's check whether it's installed or not already. Oh, it's already installed. But you can use this command to install it. So I'll just quickly show you. So all set. And then run this. And this helps in NVM bash completion. It's all good. So once you have the NPM installed, then you have to install the codex. So NPM install hyphen G at OpenAI slash codex. So it's installing the codex now. And perfect codex is installed. Let's check the version.
and codex is installed. Now before running the codex, we have to set up the configuration where we have to define the endpoint and the API of the Azure AI Foundry where the codex mini model is deployed. So let's go to Azure portal. I'm in Azure portal now and have already created an Azure AI Foundry hub. So with the name Azure AI Hub 01 and East US2. One important thing I forgot to inform you that right now Codex Mini is available only in East US2 and Sweden Central, only two regions. So I'll click on the Azure AI Foundry portal. It will take us to the project which is which I have created as AI Project 01 and then go to the models and endpoints. And I have already deployed the Codex Mini. It's very easy. Just click on the base model. And look for Codex. And increase the capacity of the tokens. But I have already deployed it, so it's not needed. However, it can support up to 200,000 tokens as inputs. So Codex Mini is deployed and here are the endpoints as well as the API. And these are the ones and don't worry about it. I'll just delete it before uploading this video. So this is the information. Now what we have to do is we have to create a configuration file into the home directory. So let's create this mkdir so this is for the home directory and codex it's created now let's create the file which is config.json and copy these values so model will be codex mini model provider is azure the name is Azure OpenAI and this is the endpoint Cognitive Services OpenAI and this we got from here till here target URI and Azure OpenAI API key instead of providing the environment key or API key directly here I'll just provide it into the terminal so that it's temporarily saved and let's save this and let's see if the file is saved properly. And perfect. So now we have to export the open API key, which we didn't provide it there. So this is the key. We are exporting it. Done. I, I have checked the documentation for Azure OpenAI mini codex. There is some limitation that when you define the export key, you have to map it to the open API key also. So I'll just quickly do that. That OpenAI API key is equal to Azure OpenAI API key. So you have to export it, done. And hopefully it should run. Let's try it, codex hyphen P provider, it's Azure. And it's showing the model as Codex Mini. Let's use O4 Mini. So now either you can do slash model and look for O4 Mini. You can select it from here or you can come back, control C. Instead of P, just provide M here. O4 mini and perfect as you can see here O4 mini is selected now let's see if it's working or not list all the files here and I got the error here which is showing that that open AI deployment is not even there now this information you're not going to find in any documentation because right now it's too new and Microsoft hasn't updated any documentation. So what you have to do is go back to your Azure AI Foundry, 
deploy O4 mini model. O4 mini. Confirm. And in the same East US2 region. And deploy. So we are not going to use the API keys of O4 mini model directly. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And let's try again. And perfect, it's working. So let's ask the question again. And it's running the command locally. And it's providing which files are available here. So right now it's integrated with your ID or your terminal and it's providing your details. I'll show an example. But before that, one important thing is that you, if you're going to use that model O4 mini, you have to deploy it in Azure AI Foundry. Otherwise your Codex mini, which is already deployed will not work. And I didn't find this information anywhere. I learned the hard way, but this will be very useful for you. Let's ask it to create a simple application. Create an HTML page which should run snake game. So right now it's in suggest mode. So it will suggest and it will change if you'll approve it. So it has provided the code. This is the whole code it has provided and it has provided with the name snake.html. So now there are multiple ways you can ask it to explain this or provide a feedback. It will, it will change it based on your recommendations or you can switch the approval mode auto approve means as soon as you ask anything it will just straight away deploy which is not recommended though it should always ask you what it's make what the changes it's going to make so yes so now as you can see it's deploying it has deployed snake.html so let's run this open in file explorer Not showing me anything. Let's quickly ask. Right now, it's showing just showing the empty page. Let's see, it'll review. And yes. <laughs> and somehow directly it's game over. I think it's still doing it. Oh, it's making multiple changes and done. So it has provided what the issue was and let's see whether it's Oh, looks good now it's working so i'll ask it to change something so let's ask can you make it a bit pretty and make snake look like a snake you can also make other changes you can just open the terminal start using your powershell and the code is getting updated here if in case you want to run it here you can run it from another terminal too so it has made some changes in the background and some font too and finally and finally how the snake will look like and game over how it should look like in the end so these all the changes are made so it made changes in the background canvas board in the snake green change the snake food and all that 
So let's try again. Okay. Uh, as you can see, the snake has eyes now. Let me show you. Yep, this has eyes. Let's make it bigger. Yep, the snake has eyes and let's start the game. I'm very bad at it, looks like. Ah, finally. It's too fast, actually. Oh, all good. That's what I wanted to show. So now the codex CLI is completely integrated in your VS code or you can open in the PowerShell itself. But the benefit of VS code is that you can you can make changes parallel. You can open multiple terminals, make the changes, test the environment and ask it to review the code itself. So if you have the code base, just run it. Now this is where you run it in the terminal or where you run it locally. Now you can integrate the codex CLI with GitHub also, GitHub Actions. So that also works. But in this video, I am just focusing on the local deployment, integrating with your IDE or the terminal. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.